My name is Juan Altofuya. I'm from Hospital Santo Tomas, Panama City, and I'm here to give a brief walkthrough uh, on the major sciences of the human culvarium, focusing more on the posterior fossa sinuses. So why is this important? Mainly, besides it is a important source of bleeding, the major sinuses of the, of the human skull, it is also uh, important to know its anatomical uh, ubication for placing uh, burr holes during uh, neurosurgical procedures. So first of all, here's an image describing, uh, uh, containing most of the major sinuses. First of all, we start by, we can classify them into paired and unpaired sinuses. Uh, the unpaired the sinuses that we have, the biggest one is the superior sagittal sinuses. It's, uh, it uh, is the largest sinus of the human skull. It runs in a sagittal plane from the anterior aspect of the skull, right over of the falx in the crista galli, and uh, all the way in the middle sagittal line uh, towards the undraining on the uh, confluent of the sinuses in the occipital bone. Right beneath the superior sagittal sinus uh, running under the free aspect of the falx, we have the inferior sagittal sinus. It runs across all the superior border of the corpus callosum, and it connects with the vein of Galen to form the straight sinus, which drains, which will drain in the mostly on the right transverse sinus. So here we you can see the superior sagittal sinus running all over the mid-sagittal line from the crista galli towards the confluence of the sinuses. Here is the inferior sagittal sinus running over the corpus callosum. And this one is the straight sinus that's formed between the union of the vein of Galen and the inferior sagittal sinus. It is important to notice that the superior sagittal sinus, uh, it's major landmark on the human skull will be the sagittal suture. But uh, in the common procedures as the bicoronal craniotomy, uh, we have to place both uh, two burr holes on each side of the sagittal suture. But we have to make uh, more importance for the sagittal sinus for it, it is a uh, important source of bleeding, and uh, if we want to ligate it, like block the blood source, uh, it is important to know that we can only ligate one third, the anterior one third of the superior sagittal sinus. Uh, if not, then we will prov uh, provoke a big cerebral infarct, uh, venous infarct. And uh, another important uh, thing to notice about the superior sagittal sinus is that uh, it not always drains directly to, towards the confluence of the sinus. Normally, it, there is a, are variations in which it drains directly into the right straight, right transverse sinus. Uh, so when placing the burr holes, you have to take into consideration that it might be a far off, a bit right toward the sagittal uh, suture. And uh, last and not least of the unpaired sinuses is the straight sinus, which runs between the junction of the fox and the tentorium towards the confluence of the sinuses. And it's formed by the junction of the vein of Galen, that is this vein, and the inferior sagittal sinus. And this will be the straight sinus. Here is another image of the, depicting the major sinuses. Here we can see the superior sagittal 
arising from the fogs here, the insertion of the fogs in the Crista Galli, uh, the inferior sagittal sinus running across all over the corpus callosum, meeting with the vein of Galen, forming the straight sinus, draining into the confluence of the sinus, or sometimes towards the right transverse sinus. Uh, then we have the, all the paired uh, sinuses. Uh, most of them are located on the medial and uh, posterior fossa. Uh, here's an image courtesy of Tops et al, where we can see the both transverse sinuses, uh, right and left. It's, uh, as I said before, we can find the right sinus a bit more uh, right transverse sinus a bit more uh, larger in diameter because of the variations I mentioned before. So the transverse sinus is contained in the attachment of the tentorium to the calvarium. It, uh, it runs la lateral and posterior towards the petrosum where it drains towards the uh, jugular vein, the internal jugular vein. And uh, what is important about this sinus is that uh, during suboccipital approaches, it can be injured. So an important landmark that has been described, uh, an uh, anatomical landmark will be the superior nuchal line. And this sinus will be uh, located around half a centimeter above the superior nuchal line. So well, when you want to perform a, a craniotomy or burrow hole, uh, it's important to know this so you won't hit, uh, you won't damage the sinus. And um, continue, we have the sigmoid sinus, which is this one over here. It can, it can be seen very well on this image. It's this one here. It's almost an S-shaped sinus. It's, uh, it's uh, anterior inferior to the, it runs anterior, anterior inferior to the transverse sinus. Is the continuation of the, of the transverse sinus. And uh, it has, uh, it passes inferior to the mastoid, uh, forming a shape as an S and uh, draining towards the jugular foramen. And uh, the other two sinuses uh, located on the, on this uh, image, we can see the inferior petrosal sinus, which runs right on the petrous uh, ridge of the petrous bone, and uh, it receives most of the drain from the basilar plexus. And over here, we also can see the superior uh, petrous sinus, uh, which runs right over the anterior aspect of the petrous bone, and uh, it receives most of the drainage of the cavernous sinus, and it drains directly into the sigmoid sinus. So, and last but not least, the basilar plexus located on the dorsal aspect of the clivus, it is, uh, it is a structure that is located more su dorsal, superior to the clivus, and uh, dorsal to the tectorial membrane inferiorly. It, is, uh, it covers almost the entire aspect of the dorsal of the clivus, here we can see, and it drains directly, well, in uh, almost 70% of the uh, specimens in this study, it uh, drained towards the inferior sagittal, inferior petrosal sinus and towards the basic cranium where it exits, exits toward the vertebral plexus. And uh, that is it. Thank you very much. Any questions?